Outdoor Ed with Dr. T, our sort of premier um, science, environmental science show. We've uh, we've been eating one, and you brought us one, so thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, and thanks for uh, coming. How I, I have to ask, so as a follow up, how did everything with the West Lawn uh, project go? How, where where are you at with that? Is it? Oh, uh, it went fantastic. Yeah, we had all the students out. Everybody got to throw wildflower seeds into this new prairie that'll be growing in the next couple of years, and the kids were excited. The teachers were excited about it, and I think everybody's just there, there's a new sign out there to <laughs> to so when people walk by, it's not just a, this big mud patch anymore. You can actually see that there's a purpose behind it. So yeah, <laughs> nice. We'll Fantastic. wait till next spring though to see how things actually go. All right, I didn't want to leave any cliffhangers and make sure we. Uh, <laughs> so um, uh, you're going to be at our library tonight talking about something. Why don't you let the listeners know what uh, what you got cooking? Yeah, well, uh, today's a great day to kind of kick this theme off because winter is coming or it's actually here right now the temperatures are dropping it's supposed to be like in the single digits tomorrow all day my commute is on foot to the library and i noticed today was a very special uh, different kind of a commute i had (laughs) yes you probably look a little different too when you bundle up so the theme that i've been kind of working with lately has been outdoors in winter and trying to think about activities and how do you engage our outdoor you know, th- things with families and little kids or big kids or adults or whatever. It's tough to inspire someone to yes. do that. <laughs> exactly. In mid-February. <laughs> yeah. So the theme of the, the seminar, the workshop that I'm giving tonight is outdoor adventures in winter, ideas for the whole family. And it's something that has come up a bunch of times with the work that I do at the Cedarburg School District and with River Edge Nature Center because, well, like you said, we kind of got three things working against us in winter. <laughs> We've got the cold. That's a big one. <laughs> yes. And I'm one of those people who is cold all the time. So I'm not a big fan of the cold, but I love the winter anyway. All right. So we've got the cold. We've got to figure out how to deal with that. We've got the dark. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it gets About dark. Four o'clock. Early. <laughs> Your day's done. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I have two little kids and my son regularly asks me, he's like, Mommy, why are you picking up us picking us up in the middle of the night? And I was like, it's not the middle of the night. It's five o'clock. It just feels like it's on. Yes. <laughs> I didn't neglect you. (laughs) And then the third one is we got cold, dark, and snow. Ah, that one. Which my kids love. Uh, Most kids do love, but sometimes us adults uh, have a little different view of it. You fall out of love over time, don't you? Yes, especially when you have to remove it from, like, your windshield. (laughs) That just, the love affair is hard to maintain at that point. (laughs) Yeah, so I'm trying to give some different ideas on how to deal with all three of these, especially right now. Um, And a lot of this stems with... You know, as I said, I do outdoor education at the Cedarburg School District, and we tell the teachers, okay, I'm going to come, and we're going to do some outdoor activities and make sure the kids are dressed right. And the key to a lot of this is really dressing properly. Layers, layers, layers. Layers, layers, layers. <laughs> because it's, it's really hard when you've got a big group of students. Sometimes I'll have 20, 30, 40 kids out, mm-hmm. and most of them are dressed okay, and then you have the one kid that doesn't have the appropriate gloves on. It's, you know, 25 The blue kid out. in the back, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and they're all having fun, except that she's cold, yeah. or he's cold, yeah. and the hands aren't right. And so it's you can see really quickly how not being dressed appropriately for yeah. the cold Absolutely. becomes a detriment, and then they don't yeah. have any fun. So dress the kids up. I discovered and actually this is uh, since I did get rid of my car and uh, I'm on foot all the time now. Um, I, I thought of something that does makes sense but I never thought of it in these terms and that's um, why just do one jacket when you can do two? Or so three? I, I haven't tried three yet. I haven't, we haven't hit those but I mean just doing two jackets this year was made all the difference in the world and yeah. the walk is no big deal now so I, it's so funny that people are like well I'm wearing my jacket like yeah we'll wear two but that's weird. It's not weird. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Once you just embrace it, you're like, well, yeah, now I'm comfortable and I don't even think about the cold. I can't put my arms down, but that's okay. It's a whole other thing. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so like I just, the dressing thing. And and so when I send my kids outside to play, I just dress them up. And I, boots are another one. It's like, I love waterproof winter boots. I was like, because they will always go and find the first pool of water that they can find. So it's might as, what is, might as well be both waterproof Woo-hoo. and winter ready. So Absolutely. then I'm covered. Check, check, check. Yep. So those, those are just some of the things that just are super important to making it just a better outdoor experience. The money I saved on an automobile, insurance, et cetera, I put towards winter gear. 
Yeah. Which made perfect sense. And yeah. I was just like, well, I'm gonna I'm not just gonna have boots, I'm gonna have good boots. So, you know, and it became fun to shop. So. Yeah. <laughs> we live here in Wisconsin. And even if you're not in Wisconsin, any place with a cold yep. climate, you just yeah, just invest in some good pieces for your kids, for you, and then everybody's happy. Be the well dressed winter warrior. <laughs> <laughs> then you can go outside right. and have fun. <laughs> yeah. So some of the other things that I think about then, especially as a family, trying to get outside, doing things, what can you do is um, I'm a big one for finding tools for the kids to play with. And this can be either at nighttime or, you know, during the daylight hours. Yeah. Uh, one of the most favorite tools that my kids just have learned about are headlamps. Ah. Especially in the dark. Okay. Because now that, you know, night comes at 5 o'clock p.m., I threw some headlamps at them about a month ago, and they're like, oh, let's go outside and play. I'm like, all right, go. Take your headlamps. Go wherever you want to yeah. go and do. And headlamps give a whole different view of everything. Um, one of the examples of this is, and something else that I'm involved with, is the Ozaki County Family Nature Club. Okay. And I, it's this really cool, fun, free club that we organize through River Edge Nature Center. We meet yeah. once a month. Um, but last month, I kind of <laughs> took this idea of outdoor adventures in dark winter and put it into play. And we went out to this park. There were 25 of us, and all the kids had headlamps and flashlights. And we just walked through this woods to huh. just explore things in a different way. I had them doing scavenger hunts at night and finding color. And because you can't see as far yeah, yeah. in the dark, the headlamps limit you to only like a couple feet in front of you. Everything just, yeah, it's just a kind of a different world. It's the same world, but it's a different world. And so all the kids were just really engaged with yeah. trying to find colors and textures, um, but you can't look far away. So they were finding, like for example, colors. They were finding things I didn't even expect. <laughs> like, go find yellow, and they come back with like this fungi under a rock. <laughs> <laughs> this little winter piece, fungi. And like, this is yellow. It's like, all right, I guess it's yellow. Yes, it's better than yellow snow. <laughs> right, I'll take the fungi. Right, right, right so, absolutely. <laughs> but it was really cool to see, like they're finding these leaves and looking at different parts of the leaves because they're like. Ooh, this part's this color, and this part's brown, and this part's black. And I was like, yeah, see? And usually you don't see those things. Yeah, you know, the big attractor to all this for me is that um, going and playing in the woods at night like that, this is the only time of year where you can do it without worrying about mosquitoes and ticks. That's a beautiful, yes, that's a beautiful that's thing. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I never thought about it in those so terms. Many so many bonuses. Yeah. Yeah. And we had owls out. We saw some really? we saw some deer running away. Uh, so, you know, there's lots of other things. You just sometimes yeah. think you don't you won't find any life, but there's still life out there. We actually found a beetle and there was a moth flying around even though it was cold out. Wow. So yeah, Amazing. you just never know. When you don't look, you don't see those kinds was of things. Was that uh, River Edge that you uh, did no. right out there? Or, uh, no. So with this family nature club, we try to explore all these different new properties and places around Ozaki County. Yeah. And so this was called Brat Woods. It's just north of Grafton. Oh. It's this little woods. It's a few acres. It's open to the public. Okay. It's, it's, it's maintained by the Ozaki Washington Land Trust. So they got lots of cool properties around. So I'm always trying to find new places that I'm not familiar with. And oh, I was sure. not familiar with this. It's right on the Milwaukee River. Brad Woods. Okay. Yeah. Huh. So and it was a perfect place to do this night walk because the paths are really wide. So we didn't have to worry about anybody falling off a cliff or anything <laughs> like that. Good, good. We just yeah. wander around and you really can't get off the path because it's it, yeah, it's just so open. Yeah. So it's a perfect place to do that and to get the kids and the families just Kind of thinking about exploring outside in the sure, darkness. Sure, sure, absolutely, that's yeah. great. And to help them, I did put out some luminaries to make it more fun. So the oh, kids nice. thought that was super exciting. Yeah, to follow the path of luminaries. And this is a once a month uh, club, the family. Yeah, that's yep. awesome. That's yep. a it's once a month. Good yep. idea. Good idea. Free that, uh, club, fun stuff. If if you know if anybody wants to learn more about it, I do have a Facebook page. It's the Ozaki County Family Nature Club. Okay, and you're yeah. you're you run it. You're and basically. I'm the runner. Yeah, that is runner, so cool. Coordinator. I had, that that helps. Uh, I mean, yeah. getting f clawing our way to summer because it can get kind of uh, you know winter can the doldrums kicks in something like yeah. that would certainly keep make yeah. summer come faster almost because you're does. yeah that's a great and the idea. whole idea is that I coordinate the activities because then as a parent you just show up with your kids <laughs> and you can do those fun things because I know as a parent that it's sometimes really nice to not have to think about what right. you're going to do absolutely so yeah that's let great. me help you do that <laughs> <laughs> that's great so what else you got on your uh, roster of uh, possibilities yeah so the other one is um, let's see tools locations um, and oh 
the question of the kids going, I don't know what to do when I'm outside. <laughs> right. and so that's where I, I mentioned. I think even I have that problem, actually. <laughs> so it's not just the kids. <laughs> yeah. Headlamps are one of the things that at nighttime make it more fun. But just like have a whole bunch of things that kids can play with. It can be sticks. It can be pine cones. These are the nature things because I'm always like, oh, this stuff is around. Leaves, whatever. <laughs> um, but wintertime, make sure you got sleds. Make yeah. sure you got scoopers and scrapers and buckets. I found buckets are very critical with kids. They yes. can fill it up with anything. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, One could use buckets to make bricks for some sort of wall and or fort. Uh, I'm yes. just throwing that out there. So. That, that occurred at my house this past weekend. <laughs> Slushy fort. Was there enough? <laughs> I was going to say, it was not... Uh, I don't know. Where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, maybe a fort for Matchbox cars and Playmobil figures, but I'm not sure our size. Uh, but that's great. Yeah, it works out well. Cool. So um, so you're talking tonight at our library, and uh, it, this is, uh, again, part of what you're doing um, for the for Cedarburg and for Ozaki County. Uh, yeah. Outdoor learning in the Berg. Yep. All part- things nature. Yeah, with the, with the school district and with River Edge Nature Center. That is great. We need, we yeah. need more of this because, uh, yeah, winter can just get uh oof, i mean um you know by late february early march you're just yeah. clawing at the walls exactly and, <laughs> and you're kind of getting stir crazy which is why yeah. i'm like get outside and try to yeah. get outside and get your whole family to go outside absolutely i really promote the idea of trying to find new places to go and explore like yeah. if you can for the weekend or even in the evening you know just go someplace and go for a hike okay. or look up like i said there's the, like river edge nature center there's a lot of places around here that have winter activities yeah. that you can yeah. do um, so look some of them up and see yeah. River Edge. Like I think every Friday in in the winter time does these like like night hikes. Yeah. Or if there's snow, it could be with uh, snowshoes. Absolutely. If, if there's snow, otherwise it's just a hike. What's the next uh, family event you have then? Is it? Uh, I actually have one tomorrow. Okay. Um, it's gonna be at Johnson Gardens, but this one is a. Uh, you have to reserve ahead of time, and we are full up. Ah, nice. I've, okay. It's just really awesome. <laughs> I got so many people that signed up. Yeah, we're making holiday crafts. Okay. Um, but next month, I'm really hoping that we can go snowshoeing Fun. somewhere here in Ozaki County in yeah. a new place. So if the weather cooperates and the snow cooperates, we'll line that up. But otherwise, we'll be doing something for keep, sure. Keep uh, keep tabs on the Facebook page, I guess, for uh, yeah. further details and information. That's fantastic. And uh, obviously, you can make it out tonight uh, to the library. I don't know if I'll get this up in time, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, just, uh, you know, Google Dr. T. <laughs> and you'll find out what's going on. Thank you so much again. All right, we'll see you next week for another uh, another installment.